we're going to go ahead and start. So uh, there'll be people joining us uh, along the way. So welcome. This is what we call uh, Sunday with Monday. It simply is something that I started back in early uh, 2020, as you can guess why, because all of a sudden there weren't any churches to go to to speak on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to do Easter that year, and uh, we could put some Easter thing together, and so uh, it's just continued, and it's been a lot of fun, and no airplane expenses, no, no car expenses, we just, you all show up on my desk, or I show up on your desk, as the case may be. So we've got Reverend Tony with us, we've got a few announcements first. So, <clears throat> you all know we have Reverend Tony on the cello today, uh, from the California Miracle Center, we've been friends from somewhere in the mid-80s. Um, Tony has been responsible for setting up that community narco center there. Uh, he's legally ordained as a minister. Um, he's the one that's also put together these incredible conferences. From 2000 on, uh, I think about, right about, maybe doing something before, but from 2000 on. Not every year, but most every year. I don't know how many you've done, Tony. It's quite a number of conferences. Ten. All over the country. Ten. So about every other year during the, that time. Um, most of them, I guess, in San Francisco, but other places, other cities as well. And one of the things I always like about Tony is his uh, openness and his frankness and his transparency, which is very, very clear when it comes to whatever the topic is, uh, sexuality, finances, uh, everything. He's also been very open-minded with regard to the different editions of The Course in Miracles and also with regard to other material besides The Course in Miracles, like The Course of Love, etc. We share that uh, open-mindedness. Open-mindedness, you may know, is uh, one of the characteristics of a teacher of God. In fact, it's sort of interesting in the listing of the characteristics of God. Uh, it's the tenth characteristic, and it begins by saying, open-mindedness, perhaps the last characteristic a teacher of God develops. Wow. So we're there we are developing the last characteristic. So we'll hear a lot more from Reverend Tony in just uh, a moment. So you're going to be hearing some uh, music today, uh, but we're going to have a 10 minute break halfway through, and the music that you'll be hearing at that time is a chant from Jeff Olmsted uh, called The Chorus of Miracles. Jeff was the music director of our church, NFA Fellowship in New York City, uh, throughout the entire 90s uh, when we were very active there. He's written a lot of wonderful songs. Next slide. So, coming up is uh, on December the 12th. Uh, Robert Perry, who you probably all know, has produced the Course of Miracles annotated series. He took all of Helen's original uh, notes in shorthand, transcribed the whole thing, and uh, put it out in this way that 40, 45,000 more words than what we have in the FFA edition, something like that. Uh, so Tony and I are going to talk about that some this morning, too, about the differences, because he's been studying Robert's uh, book a, a great deal. And uh, so that's a month from now. Next slide. So for those of you who would like, I have an ongoing uh, Tuesday evening, Thursday afternoon class. It's the same class in terms of going over the material in the course. You can join that at any time. Just go to our website, which is miraclesmagazine.org. And uh, it's, a 60, it's a $90 fee for the whole course. But we'll prorate that for you for individuals. And uh, you can offer less, and that'll be fine. Uh, next slide. So anyone who is here today is entitled, because you signed up for this, to a one-year free subscription to Miracles Magazine. Uh, but we need to know that you want to get, uh, or we need to know your, we have your address. We probably do have some of your addresses, but not all of them. So if you don't think maybe we do, let us know through our website, and you'll Get Miracles Magazine for the next year. Slide. 10% uh, of today's donation goes to Feed America. Uh, thank you for helping. With all these who have been doing this, uh, Feed America sent us a nice note the other day. It's been quite a, quite a nice, nice donation this year. Slide. So the intermission I mentioned, so this is going to happen about five minutes till one Eastern Standard Time. And the chant is going to be heaven as a decision I must make. You can just take off, go to the bathroom, get something to eat, uh, or sit and chant along with Jeff, whatever you would like to do. I think that's all of our announcements for now. Let's come back. 
to uh, our dialogue. So the way this is going to work is that Tony and I together are going to dialogue for until about five minutes to one. It's now about 10 minutes after 12. And uh, then after that is over, uh, Bud is going to keep track of the dialoguing that's going on on your part in the chat. And he's going to share that with us. <clears throat> and just kind of notice what kind of questions are maybe coming up or what kind of dialogue has been going on. And then around about uh, 1.30 or so, maybe before that, uh, we're going to open the floor to even anyone that would like to have, ask a question, make an observation. Just raise your hand. You can raise your physical hand or you can raise your electronic hand. The electronic works a little bit better in terms of our seeing you. And then um, we'll be able to dialogue with directly with, with Tony and with Tony uh, or myself, whatever, whatever you would like. So uh, let's get rolling. Hi, Tony. Hey. In case you didn't oh, know, yeah. uh, you would never guess he's in San Francisco. I'm in my office in New York, uh, not the city. We're about uh, near the Hudson River, actually, uh, about um, an hour and 15 minutes north of New York City. So we've both been working with this Course in Miracles thing for uh, quite a long time now, Tony. I remember dialoguing with you back in the mid-80s when I lived someplace else. So um, why don't you start by telling us, for the folks that don't know, a little bit about how you got involved in this thing and uh, why in the world did you decide to stick with it and do you really full-time. You've made the Course in Miracles your life. So. I'd like to hear that myself. Okay. okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me to be part of uh, Sundays with Monday. I, I'm really uh, honored. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, and thank all of you who are joining us. I uh, really appreciate that you're here. And it uh, means a lot to me. Okay. Um, I moved to San Francisco from upstate New York in 1979, and one of the reasons I moved to San Francisco was because I had this um, burgeoning interest in spirituality, and I knew that many spiritual things and organizations were located here, and so uh, that was one of the reasons. There were other reasons, but that was one of the reasons why I came out to San Francisco. So uh, after I got settled, I started, you know, checking around, and... Um, in 1980, uh, I discovered A Course in Miracles and um, got it and um, was puzzled by it. Uh, even though I had been uh, doing a lot of spiritual studies, it still seemed pretty confusing to me. I'm not sure a lot of people have had that experience. And so it wasn't long that I decided afterwards that I decided I, I need to find some other people who are reading this to talk about it because it's, it's confusing me. And so I found out that there were indeed groups that met. And so probably about 1981, I connected with a group and um, they had formed a small organization called the San Francisco Miracles Foundation and I joined them. So um, I became part of the San Francisco Miracles Foundation. I think I led my first group for them in 1983. In 1985, that organization dissolved, and so a number of us who had been involved decided we wanted to continue the work going. So in 1985, we formed uh, the first organization, which was the California Miracles Foundation. Uh, that organization only lasted for two years uh, because of conflict with the board members, uh, but that dissolved, and then I reformed another organization in 1987 called the California Miracle Center with my partner at the time, Reverend Larry Bedini. And uh, the, the current CMC is what has uh, carried on from that formation in 1987. Uh, as far as why did I devote myself to it? Um, it was really organic. It was, none of it was like, uh, you know, I didn't set out to form a church based on A Course in Miracles or anything like that. Everything just happened one step after the next. And I can say it was just all guided by the Holy Spirit. It was just, you know, it was the next thing to do, what seemed to be the right thing to do. It's what Holy Spirit was guiding us to do. Uh, we, through the CMC, have had a Sunday service, regular Sunday church service since uh, July of 1986. I think we've, I've only missed one Sunday 
when our center was being painted, actually, and we thought the painters would be done in time, but they were not done, and we had to cancel at the last minute. But other than that, uh, I've had a service every single Sunday since July of 1986. Wow. Um, and when we finish here today, I'm going right over to the CMC Sunday service, Sunday gathering, and I'm uh, not the speaker today, but uh, I'll be there to support them. Um, we started uh, doing weekend retreats. Uh, John was uh, yeah. our guest at, I think, two of those weekend retreats. Yeah, those were in, right, the, yeah. Yeah, in the 80s, we would go up to a retreat facility right. in, um, you know, in the woods, in the mountains, uh, or wherever, uh, outside of San Francisco. In 2000, we decided to have a big conference um, in celebration of... Uh, the new millennia, new millennia, bringing a course of miracles into the new millennia, and that was during the time of the whole copyright controversy. And uh, I think it was really good for us to gather as a community during that time because many people were like concerned uh, about a course of miracles and its future at that time. So just gathering with people and just really seeing how strong the movement was was a really great thing. Uh, as John says, we done conferences. We've done conferences in Boston, in uh, New York City. Great. That was the biggest one. New York City, downtown, uh, Midtown, I'm told is okay. the correct place. Midtown Manhattan. Right. Um, we've been to Las Vegas um, at the Rio Casino, and we've been to Boston, right? Downtown Boston. So uh, we hope to be able to be doing conferences again. Uh, you know, the current situation with the pandemic has to ease up a little bit more because our conferences, we all sit close together and sing and all eat together. And I can't really see a conference if we're sitting six feet apart and wearing masks. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it. So, <laughs> so the situation has got to shift a little bit before we do in-person conferences. We did do a virtual conference this past year which was uh, very interesting and awesome. It was great. At least we were able to do that. But I do miss, you know, I miss giving John a hug. Yeah, and, dude, uh, and dancing with you, too. And You're dancing with John. John and yeah, we I always got to have a dance together. <laughs> <laughs> just have a dance. We have bands. We, you know, they're, they're really a hoot and, uh, and great wow. teaching. You know, that it's just a, yeah. a fun time and a lot of great teaching. So, uh I guess to how did I get involved? Why did I get involved? It was just one step after another, uh, being guided, and uh, that's what I still do today. You know, just do the next thing, just being guided. Yeah, it sounded like it was ordained, so to speak. I mean, more ways than one. Ordained. <laughs> ordained. It was ordained. This was supposed, what was supposed to happen, and this is what happened. You, you, you're in the place you need to be in. Uh, that's that's really great. So another thing that interests me about uh, your work is, as I mentioned before, is your open-mindedness and your willing not to not to become a kind of course of mental, fundamentalist, although of course it's central to what you do. It's certainly central to what we do with the One Mind Foundation here as well. But at the same time, if that's true, we like to look at the Course of Love by Norris Brown and uh, other uh, inspired writings that are coming down and, and appreciate those and, and seeing what the overlaps are. And, and that's been kind of Exciting for us. You want to talk a little bit about your willingness to do that and what you've looked at and what you like? And what yeah, the, the, you know, the mission statement of A Course of Miracles says that, you know, we embrace A Course of Miracles, but related teachings. So uh, we're always open to related teachings, though we're very grounded in the Course. I'm real grounded in the Course. Um, you're going to say, I've been studying the Course for 40 years <laughs> or more. Um, and it's fun to read other things, especially fun to read other things that are related and uh, kind of flesh out. Uh, so I, I have been reading uh, A Course of Love. Uh, mm -hmm. Reverend Kim Wilson is here, and she's the teacher of our Course of Love class. And okay. It's the only class the CM, that, that I participate with, the CMC, that I don't teach. I'm just oh. there as a student. Um, and so I kind of appreciate... Uh, not having to be on for that class, but just being kind of there, uh, listening and reading along with everybody else. Um, you know, you know, you could talk about that for hours, but um, you know, my my grounded path is a course in miracles. But I read other things, and 
sometimes they provide uh, some really interesting teaching. So um, one of the things that I do like to share about A Course of Love. So, uh, you know, one of the more um, challenging teachings in A Course of Miracles is about the real world. And in A Course of Miracles, it says the real world is not like the world that we currently see. You know, it, um, it doesn't have stores where we go and buy things. We don't live alone and separately. And it says, uh, and there's no, there's no nighttime. It's always bright and it's always day. And, you know, like you read that, you know, the real world isn't supposed to be heaven. You know, the real world is still like it's the final illusion before we get to heaven. And it's like, well, how are we gonna have a world where it's There's never no night? It's it's never night, and it's yeah, not. I know. Day. That would be, that, what does that mean? <laughs> but a course of love has an interesting. It carries that forward, yes. and the course the course of love is is apparently also to the large part channeled by Jesus uh, through a woman named Mari, and uh, Jesus through Mari who she calls herself the first receiver. So Jesus through Mary says, uh, you know, don't be concerned about how things like that will happen uh, oh, yeah. and that you don't understand how it's gonna be a, a, a world with no night. He goes, your science will describe it uh, just like it always does because that's science's job. So once it happens, your scientists will just find a way to explain it and everybody will just accept it. So just don't be concerned about it. So, you know, yeah. Right. So he kind of verifies that this is going to happen in, yeah. in perception and that um, once it happens that we don't have night and it's just daytime all the time, <laughs> science will just figure out a way to explain that and we'll just accept it and that'll be cool. And I, 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 I just like about. that he carried that that forward in a course of love knowing that it was a challenging teaching in a course of miracles and i also like a course of love talking about the end of learning and that's hinted at in a course in miracles uh you know it's talked about that we will reach this time mm -hmm. when learning is over and a course of, of love like carries that a little forward so it's great yeah very good and uh let's talk a little bit about the newest edition uh, robert perry's uh Picking up on this, I know that you've studied this in much more detail than I have. I have it here. I got mine over here as well. And uh, I've been reading it, but I think you've been doing classes and stuff on that, have you not? So I have uh, been teaching a class in it for about f five, four or five years now. Yeah. And wow. uh, we've, we've been through the whole book twice. And, uh, you know, when oh. we go through the book, I read, we read all the footnotes or, you know, it's very uh, oh, elaborately yeah. footnoted. And then he's got the cameo essays in the back and uh, all of the front matter, the appendices and the, and the back matter and all that. So we read everything. So, yeah. Um, what can I say about this book? I mean, first of all, I mean, it's a masterful mm. work by Mr. Perry. Right. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, it's like only Robert Perry would have done that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you're, you're quite people. right. Robert I is definitely like, a scholar. He really is. Yeah, I was like, you know, for years, I kind of wondered what happened to Robert. You know, he was sort of there, but sort of not. He was like in the background and he didn't seem to be doing much. And uh, I figured he was raising his kids in England or something. I don't know what the hell he was doing. But I remember asking myself, like, why, you know, why, what, why did Robert kind of drop out of sight for a decade? Hey. <laughs> and um, I even talked with you, John, about that. Well, yeah, what's, what's going on with Robert? Why don't we hear from him? But what he was doing was uh, going through Helen's notes and uh, creating a brand new edit from the from mostly from the notes there yeah. are places i mean it's that he had to go to the ur text to pull things you know there's one of the notebooks that's missing around chapter 20 and 21 so i mean from that he had to go to the ur text but uh so he he has compiled a entirely new edit of a course in miracles going back to the notes and um yeah it's impressive it's an impressive work i don't agree with everything that robert says and you know in the class like sometimes we'll read one of robert's footnotes and we'll go yeah <laughs> nah, i don't go along with that um but he has um 
You know, I'll tell you one of the things, one of the things that Robert said that really shifted me is that it's that quote, swear not to die, you make a promise that you cannot keep. So I always kind of puzzled about that one because swear not to die to me meant promise you're not going to die. I say, okay, I'll promise I'm not going to die. And then it says, you make a promise that you cannot keep. Go ahead. Yeah, it's like, well, you told me to promise not to die, and now you're telling me I can't keep this promise? That didn't make sense. Uh But Robert explains it. He says, swear not to die means stop promising to die. Uh Stop promising to die. Swear not to die. Stop promising to die because that's, we came here with a promise to die and Mm. Jesus is telling us to stop it. I I remember you from that one, John. Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Bob Newhart just said, stop it. Uh, So stop promising to die because we cannot keep that promise to die. That's the promise we can. And and I would never have had that shift. I would have read that for another 40 years And not, it just, but Robert, you know, it's like, oh, Robert's right. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. So, so things like that, you know, have been really, really valuable. The, the, you know, Robert includes all the, he found a way to include all the personal material that is not actually in the book proper by, he wrote little essays about all the personal material. He calls those the cameo essays. There's quite a few of them. Um, So it's, it's a, it's a it's an impressive piece of work. You don't have to agree with everything that you know. I don't agree with everything that Robert says, but you know, ninety five percent of it pretty good. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's just you know if if you've been studying a course of miracles, I was telling John, if you've been studying a course of miracles for years and reading the same book, yeah, pick up one of the other ones. Read that. There's you know, it's kind of it's they're just interesting. They're they're a little different. Well, sometimes the course is different. And somebody just told me the other day, this is not the same book I read 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's not the same book you read 20 years ago. You've changed a lot. You know, you can't step into the same river twice kind of idea, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was pretty close with, with Helen. Uh, and I know that the FIP edition is what she thought we should have. Um, some people say that's Ken. I think Ken certainly had influence. But uh, if you'd have known Helen, you would have known that she was the final sayer, the, the naysayer, the yay-sayer when it comes to all this. And it's very understandable why the personal stuff was left out from the beginning. That's really not necessary. It doesn't need, we don't need to be messing in it. But then I'd be curious beyond that, uh, where did you feel that there are different points of view, let's say, or additions that added something that, I mean, as I read Robert's work, uh, of course, we're going to have him here in December to uh, talk about himself, but in the meantime, we can talk about this. Uh, there'll be things I'll say, why did they leave that out? I mean, I, why did she leave that out? I don't, I don't quite understand why that, that does clarify. That, that does help to amplify. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we c- I could talk about that for hours, so I don't want to talk about that for hours. Uh, I do want people to know, you know, I studied the FIP book for 20-some years. Look, here's one of the books I studied. Uh, the reason why you can't see much of the cover is because it's worn. It's gone. <laughs> it's, gone. <laughs> it's gone. But, you know, I, I studied the FIP book, and it was really instrumental in my life, but I don't read from that book anymore. Okay, so I mean, the editing of A Course in Miracles is, you know, it's a big topic. So I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, give you two examples. Okay, that's good. That's perfect. Two, two examples of things that were edited okay. out that I think should not have been edited out. The very first thing, the first thing is the very first thing she wrote. Okay, ah. so there's the, there is the story that Helen heard. Uh, this is a course in miracles. Please take notes, and uh, and that was the first thing she heard on that a faithful morning or mm-hmm. evening, and she called Bill Thetford up, and Bill Thetford told her, "Well, take the notes, and we'll look at it in the morning." And so that's the story. That's a really good story. It's Mm -hmm. not true. I'm sorry. It's not true. So if you look at her notes, her notes from the first day that she's writing, the the line, this is A Course in Miracles, please take notes, doesn't come till way later in the day. 
And actually, it's in response to a question she asks. She asked the voice in her head, what is this that I'm getting? You know, what is, she writes it down, something, I forget the actual question. It's like, what is this? What am I writing? And that's when Jesus says, this is a course in miracles. Please take notes. It was in response to a question. The very first thing she wrote, the very first thing she heard on that first day is, you will see miracles through your hands through me. Now, come on. That's an important line. And that's Jesus' introduction to A Course in Miracles. You will see miracles through your hands through mm -hmm. me. Okay. It's not nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists, herein lies the peace of God. That was added way, way later, after everything was channeled. That's a kind of an, a very abstract idea. You know, people are very attached to it, but that was not the introduction that Jesus gave to Helen when he first started talking to her. The introduction Jesus gave to Helen before the principles of miracles is you will see miracles through your hands through me. Right. And then he repeats it a little later on in the day. And that's totally edited out. I mean, like, come on. Okay, okay so there's that. Okay. Uh, the other one is, you know, and I've talked about this, was that, that uh, the great crusade that we're on has a slogan. They edited out the slogan. The slogan is listen, learn, and do. So, um, you, you know, use you that know, for one of your conferences. <clears throat> yeah, we use that one of the conferences. So, you know, I, if I'm supposed to be on a great crusade, I think it would be really good to know that the slow, there's a slogan to this crusade. <laughs> 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 and, and then he says, and then he explains, he goes, the first two are not enough. So listening and learning is not enough. He goes, the real members of my party are uh, active workers. Sure. So the real members of Jesus's group of people that he's amassing are active, we're active doers. So there's a real emphasis of doing. And mm -hmm. even the first line, you know, you will see miracles through your hands through me is a, is a doing. You will do miracles. So the editing as it progresses over the years gradually or maybe not gradually removes most of these references to active doing and makes the course much more abstract and much more of a mental thing. While the earlier edits, it's kind of both. You know, it's obviously a mental thing, but there's all these things about actually doing things. And you begin to lose that. By the time you get to the FIP version, it's uh, pretty much lost. So what about, what about the fact that when we get to the workbook, it's a totally different story. I mean, now we're doing for sure. I mean, now you look at look at something like Lesson 68, uh, Love Holds No Grievances, and the kind of direction that is telling you to things to very specifically do this. Think about these kind of people. Think of those those kind of people. Uh, yeah. You know, sit with that for a moment. That's that's doing sure. That that is a doing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I think though that there's a doing that's really more about our body. You know, oh, yeah. and this survives in the FIP version, you know, that, that the atonement or that I need your hands, your feet, your your eyes, your voice. He said, you know, he runs through the litany of body parts <laughs> <laughs> several times. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jesus really wants us to dedicate our bodily life to him and to this work of being a miracle worker. And it's still there in the FIP version, but it's uh, it's it's way more prominent in the earlier edits. Mm. So these people that say that the the addition doesn't make a difference, you know, I I beg to differ with them. I think the addition <laughs> does make a difference. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't read the FIP version, but there no. are different messages and nuances of messages that come through the earlier the earlier edits. Hmm. So anyway. Well, that's a good observation. I'm still kind of stuck on FIP, but probably because I was sort of stuck on Helen. <laughs> but I just, I mean, you know, I know how, how kind she is. She was really wonderful to me. And I feel a certain- Yeah, but you're, look at, you're, you're talking about the different editions now, John. So I, know, I mean, I, I want to note that. That's a, that's a real shift. <laughs> yeah, I got it. So, yeah. It, 
My, my, my go-to book, the one that I, I would really recommend for new students is the one that's published by Sims. And again, this book is really beat up. Notice my binding, it's duct tape. And people said, why don't you get a new book? And I guess, well, because I got, you know, I got all my highlights, you know, in this book. Um, the one published by Sims, uh, which is called A Course in Miracles Original Edition. Read your Could you explain what Sims is for people who may not know? Sims is the Course in Miracles Society. Uh, their offices are in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, there's the central people there are Tom Whitmore and uh, Reverend Regia Joy Green, who's here today. Mm -hmm. And you know they've been publishing uh, what is called the original edition since uh, as soon as the copyright was uh, freed up. I mean, they actually they published one version of it before the copyright was freed up in like 2000. But then after the copyright really got freed up in uh, 2003, uh, they started publishing the original edition. been published steadily since 2003. So this is the version that's based on the first major edit, the one that was done by Bill Thetford and Helen Shuckman uh, before Ken Wapnick got on the scene. So it was Bill and Helen's uh, edit. And there's a reason why that one, there's a reason why I study that one. It's because in some of the early channeling, and you see this in the Ur text, uh, Jesus tells Helen, Helen is concerned what to do with the personal material in the course. And Jesus tells Helen, don't be concerned about that. It's Bill's job to decide what to leave in and what to leave out. Hmm. So there is this kind of command from Jesus that Bill, will be in charge of that and uh so you know the the version that was found in the hewlin casey library which is what the original edition is based on uh that's the edition that helen and bill edited so that was the one that bill had some you know a major say in right. he didn't have a major say in what then became the fip version though he did sign off on it so right. there's that right. so i studied the original edition for one, because of the extra material, at least in there, you have the slogan, listen, learn, and do. Uh, and also because it's the edition that uh, Jesus told Helen uh, to turn, kind of to, to have Bill say the final the final word. And that's the one that Bill had the final word on. So, but Are we just looking at different kind of nuances that are the differences? The message is the same message throughout, is it not? Regardless of what book I'm picking up? Well, you know, it depends. If you're a new student, yeah, it's the same message. If you're a 40 year veteran, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not, so what, I, don't, I don't see him as the same message. No. Okay, so what does the 40 year veteran have that the new student doesn't have? Because, the, as I've already said, the earlier editions are more of a command to be active in the world and be doing things in the world. And this has always been a big question. And, and one of the big criticisms that some Course in Miracles teachers have, like people criticize Marianne Williamson because mm -hmm. she's so active in the world right. and running for president and such. And, you know, people say, you know, man, she doesn't, wow, why doesn't she really practice the course? And just doesn't she just know it's just a mental shift? She's all involved with the world. But in the earlier edits, it's really clear that there's a, a world involvement that's called for. And I don't think the community would be criticizing Marianne as much, maybe they would, uh, if they were more familiar with what the earlier edits said. Uh, so I think there is, I mean, obviously it's all about forgiveness and you know and you know our relationship with holy spirit is the same and you know the uh, our reperception of relationships is a, is a sim you know it's the same message there's there's a lot you know there's a lot that's the same but it's not all the same and mm -hmm. uh and and i think as you yeah for the 40-year veteran student there's enough of a difference for me mm -hmm. you know why i want to read the the earlier edits so I think we would agree that the change that has to happen is the change that happens in my mind, your mind, our mind. If, if that's if that's the change, if that that's the miracle. Actually. And once that miracle happens, then whatever happens, I guess in terms of relationship to the world, 
essentially, we're going to be loving the heck out of it. I'm loving the heck. <laughs> and, well, I, I think for me, I re, you know, I'm relating to the world as a mirror image of what is going on in my mind. Sure. But I think there's, you know, what do I want to say? It's like a computer. It's like the graphic interface on a computer. So on a computer, if I want to get rid of a file, I, I put my cursor up and I drag the file into this symbolic trash can. And then I go to a menu and I include empty trash. Um, so I am manipulating the images on the screen, but it is having an effect on what is actually in the computer. So it's all an internal shift, but we have to be guided by the Holy Spirit. And I think many times the Holy Spirit has us do the internal shift by manipulating what's going on in the world, just like we do on the computer. So the, 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 the greatest way for me to know that I have forgiven somebody might just be to call them up and say, hey, I'm sorry. Um, and if we're too hooked on this idea that it's all internal, we may not hear that guidance, even though the Holy Spirit is trying to get, get it through to us. So we have to be open to understanding that the world is this graphic representation of our minds. And just like the computer uh, desktop, sometimes you manipulate the files and you drag things. It's, it's, it's having an effect on what's underneath. And you don't know what the right thing to do to forgive anybody is. Um, but the Holy Spirit does. And maybe you do forgive them all in your mind without ever doing anything. But maybe you do do something. And you have to be open to getting that guidance. And if you're too hooked in this idea that it's all mental, you're not open to hear. You're, you've already told uh, Holy Spirit what the guidance needs to look like before you get it. <laughs> Forgiveness, essentially, I see it as simply a letting go. You know, I, I, I dropping my attachment to, to whatever that it is I may be attached to. Speedy Marian, I once heard her say, and I, well, one of my favorite lines from her is, uh, forgiving somebody doesn't mean you got to do lunch. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What did you say? One of my favorite lines from Marianne is, forgiving someone doesn't mean you got to do lunch. Yeah, I remember that one. You remember that one. So we don't, you know, it, it, that still means that it's happening within me and it changes me and then it changes me in terms of my entire relationship with the entire world at all times and what that simply means is that i as i said a moment ago i'm simply loving the world i'm not condemning it. i'm not finding any fault with it uh, i have no grievances to hold against it etc but that's me and then that affects the world well that's the uh, but i think I understand what Marianne's saying, and she's right. However, I think you need to take it a little further. So forgiveness doesn't mean that you have to do lunch. However, forgiveness does mean that you are going to have to do lunch if that's what Holy Spirit wants you to do. Sometimes. So you don't have to do lunch, but if you're guided to do lunch, yeah. then you do the lunch. No, I agree. Sometimes it would really require doing lunch. Sometimes it really requires doing the lunch. Some, it really does. I mean, sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't mean you have to, but sometimes you know you got to write that letter or make that phone call or right. sit down with this person or, or whatever. But on the whole, it means it's just letting go of any kind of. Well, letting it go is always the the context. It's always the ground of being. It's always the foundational level. But what's going to enable you to let it go? is yeah. going to vary situation to situation and there's no knowing that in advance and it's only the holy spirit or jesus maybe if you if you go to jesus for guys it's only the holy spirit or jesus that's really gonna know or be able to tell you how to bring it into um into fruition in, mm -hmm. in your mind changing the topic a little bit is there any part of the course that you would sort of say is like your your favorite part of the course or something that has been most effective uh, in, in terms of you and turning your kind of life around or deepening your the wholeness of, of your or is it just the whole thing it's probably just the whole thing because i'm always going through the whole thing 
you know, and at different times, different passages, you know, I, I, I really love the manual. I love all the healing stuff that's in the manual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really good. Every, every year when I read that, I, I'm just really impressed with it. And, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I think the stuff on relationships is really challenging, but also really liberating and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I would say probably, you know, personally, I mean, at, at a certain, you know, maybe for the first 20 years, <laughs> <laughs> for the first 20 years, the stuff on relationships was probably more important and maybe more, you know, more, more personally mm -hmm. transformational. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I think I've kind of gotten past that a little bit. Um, so that means you've healed some of our relationships. I'm sorry? That means we've healed some of our relationships. We've engaged in the actual healing process, the forgiveness really, process. I mean, relationships come up to heal all the time. I, I oh, but sure. I feel, you know, I feel pretty healed. Yeah, right. In, in my primary, you know, my relationship, people that I spend the most time with. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel pretty healed. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, you know, yeah. I, I think since then, you know, like in the last five years, the healing stuff has been, uh, you know, more transformational, more like what I'm really dedicating myself to healing and making healing manifest the way Holy Spirit is guiding me to teaching healing, uh, the way Holy Spirit is guiding me to teach it. Um, and, you know, so, so all the stuff about healing kind of attracts my attention now more than the stuff about relation. It's all very challenging. You know, I, you know, people come to A Course in Miracles and, you know, there's frequently this first rush of, isn't this wonderful? It's all about love. It's just great. I'm yeah. so happy. Sure. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get the shovel out. We got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but does, do you realize it says that we have to let go of all of our special relationships and uh, uh -huh. and turn them all into holy ones and that that, you know, can be really, you know, really challenging and all, uh -huh. all of that stuff. I mean, there's there's really challenging teachings in A Course in Miracles. So um, and and how everybody is going to, you know, integrate them into their lives is is deeply personal. It's between you and Holy Spirit or you and Jesus. And everybody's going to do it a little bit different differently but you have to be willing to challenge the way you look at things and the world and the way you look at relationships and that means your intimate partners and all of that you have to really be willing you know a course of miracles says you have to be willing to uh question every value that you have so all those values that you have about your relationships and how whatever you are loyal or not loyal or whatever you got to challenge all those things those are those are mostly worldly constructs yeah. and um you know jesus or the holy spirit might be guiding you in a different direction and there's no doubt about that that's, that's where the work is, is definitely especially with our the major i mean the people we spend time with you say but everybody trump for example uh the relationship we all have with that guy uh, that's a special relationship too the, the relationship we have with who? Trump. Because there's a guy named Trump. Maybe you haven't been watching the news. Oh, oh. You <laughs> I don't want to get into talking about personalities. I'm just, just, I'm just pointing out know, we all have this relationship. About, if I start talking about President Trump. No, no, no. I don't want you to do that. People will drop off the call. <laughs> I, 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 I would drop out myself. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, what I will say about any political figure, President Trump, but maybe President Biden or whomever is, you know, the course does have a reference about special hate relationships and that we have to look at them. No, yeah. And and so when the course says let go of your special relationships, you know, people always think about, you know, your your special love relationships or your friends and, you know, to re-perceive them. But it, it also means the special relationships you have with those people that you think it's just fine to hate. <laughs> Right. Exactly. I, I can hate President Trump. That, you know, look at all the people that hate him. Look at all the people that say really terrible things about him. I'm just going to say terrible things about him, too, because, hey, because yeah, everybody does. Well, you've got to look at that. And <laughs> yeah, um, sure. 
challenge that. And, and oh, yeah. you know, the, the chorus would say, dream softly of your sinless brother. You know, can you perceive President mm -hmm. Trump or let's say President Biden? Can you perceive them as sinless? Can you count up their gifts instead of the hurts they're giving you? There you go. You know, can you do that with President Trump? Can you do that with President Biden? Can you do that with whomever? I got to do that with my governor. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've gone more local, you know, I, I got real issues with my governor, okay. Gavin Newsom, you know, but I've got to like heal that and forgive that. And I can't, you know, I, I got to find the blessed about him and love him. And, uh, you know, so it's a challenge. Those things are challenged. But when the course is talking about special relationships, remember, it includes the special hate relationships and, and oh, people yeah. say, oh, I don't hate him. Yeah, you do. I hear how you talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we're talking about it, if it's burning inside you enough that you could coming out of your mouth, well, then it, there's something going on. There's something going on. Something if you if on. you repost like real derogatory political cartoons on your Facebook page, there's something you going hate on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot of the course is just learning how to leave things alone. <laughs> that the ego would love to get in there and play with but we don't need to get in there and play with it because that's just a part of the insanity of yeah. the world and, and of ourselves within the world I mean, let's remember the intention that the FIP edition started the foundation for inner peace becomes the foundation which publishes the course because that's what it is all about it, it says that very clearly in the course this is about coming to peace Within ourselves, having peace of mind. And if you got peace of mind, you got it. I mean, what else do you want? You know, contentment, be able to live in this world without being insane. Uh, that's pretty good. Purpose. Purpose, yeah. That's the purpose. Yeah. Um, years ago, somebody asked me at a Sunday service, Sunday gathering, what was the greatest gift Course of Miracles has ever, you know, has given me? And I, you know, I not really thought, I mean, I, I didn't think about it and I didn't think about an answer, but I just got guided um, in that moment. You know, I just got a clear message from the Holy Spirit and I just had a profound and uh, lasting sense of purpose. Mm. You know, what does A Course in Miracles give me? You know, I, I, it, it'd be nice to say peace, but I'm not always peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, purpose goes to peace. Yeah, but I I always have a very clear sense of purpose, mm -hmm. and it and it and it doesn't waver, right? And um, and that's a really wonderful gift. Uh, right. You know, I I grew up in a in a time you know the '60s and '70s when we were you know wondering what life was all about and you know what's it all about and uh, how do I fit in. And I don't ever wonder those things. I know what it's about. I know how I fit in. I know what I'm here to do. I know what Holy Spirit wants me to do every day. And I do my best to do it. I sometimes don't do as good of a job as I wish I had, but I know what it was. I know what it is. And I just endeavor to do that. And uh, I'm, I'm never bored. <laughs> right. Well, that, that is, you know, that, that's a wonderful step right there. I mean, to know what it is, I mean, to, to have your intention clear. I mean, that's, that's, that's fantastic. That facilitates the next step and the next step and the next step. So just yeah. living the life that you want to live as a part of being a human being on this planet and trying to do what you can do to help heal the process along the way. Very good. We're actually up to the point of almost uh, about five of, not quite, but six minutes up. So. Um, I think maybe this is a good time, bud, for us to do our 10-minute uh, intermission. We can do that. Okay. Welcome back to all those of you who are back. So we're going to um, 
take time now. To Bud is going to uh, share with you uh, what he saw coming up uh, in the chat during the first part of our time today. And we've got we've got a a question from Dove though that wants to know what is our purpose. All right. Well, that you tell Dove what his purpose is, Tony. Uh, who was who it that wants to know what his purpose is? Dove. Dove. Well, the no. only person that can tell you what your purpose is is the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> uh, but everybody does have a purpose, and everybody does have a particular part to play in the atonement. Uh, we are, and if we're a Course of Miracles student, we're here to join the Great Crusade uh, or the Great Awakening, depending on where in the Course you're reading. Maybe those things are the same thing. Maybe they're not the same thing. I've sometimes wondered about that. Uh, but uh, we have a part to play in the Great Awakening, and we are on the Great Crusade, and nobody else can play our part. We have to do our part, and the Holy Spirit's gonna tell you what that is. So your purpose is to do what Holy Spirit tells you to do in the Great Awakening. Don't judge it in advance, and don't think you know what that is until you ask. And ask with an open mind, letting go of all your preconceived notions of what you think that might be. Would you agree that it's really waking up ourselves? Yeah. I mean, it's really coming to the Christ mind. To see what Jesus saw, to do what Jesus did, I mean, that's, that's it. And then you'll be having the effect on the world as well. Judy's got, the, got a question. Uh, still on mute. Okay. Um, very, very enjoyable, um, Tony, um, bringing lots of new perspective for this for me. And I had never thought about special hate relationships. Oh, yeah. And when it comes to politics, <laughs> you know, leaving names, it, it, that is like the thing that throws me over the edge. So I'm wondering what you would recommend in terms of dealing with that. I mean, more asking of the Holy Spirit, prayer, what, what would, or is there any particular part of the text that talks, speaks to that? Well, of course, the, I mean, the course says you, we need to look at our special hate relationship. We need to look at it. Uh, and, um, you know, identify them and offer them up to the Holy Spirit. I mean, I can just say little practical things. Uh, for one, I don't call them Trump. <laughs> or Biden. <laughs> it's President Trump. There He's you the go. President of the United States. It's President Biden. He's the duly elected president of the United States. I give them their respect. Um, I don't have an authority. I try not to have an authority problem. You know, the course talks about authority problems. So. They, they are the president, you know, my governor, Governor Gavin Newsom. Mm -hmm. I may just like a lot of things that Gavin does, but he is Governor Newsom. And I always, uh, when I refer to him, or any of them, I always uh, give them the respect of their position. And, uh, you know, uh, you know you, not having a special hate relationship doesn't mean you have to like them. It doesn't mean you have to like what they do. Mm. But, you know, just how are you thinking about them in your mind? You know, it, it's that kind of thing. And do you think they're the problem? <laughs> you know? well, that, but yeah, especially the whole idea of projection, because often I will say, well, what is it within me that is projecting that feeling onto them? And I can't conceive that. Oh, no, there's no way I'm thinking like that or I'm like that. So uh, don't, for Judy. <laughs> don't, don't ask that question of yourself. Don't that's the question you gotta ask and give to the Holy Spirit. Okay. You know, if you're asking that question of yourself, it doesn't matter what kind of answer you get, it's gonna be wrong. <laughs> uh, even if you come up with a nice logical answer, it's still gonna be wrong. You gotta ask that question of the Holy Spirit. And um you know, just a, when you ask the Holy Spirit a question, don't expect the answer immediately. I think that's a that's a real help. Um, you know, I always remember that Jesus took three days to rise from the dead. Give Holy Spirit at least three days <laughs> to answer your question. Just your job is to ask the question as thoroughly and completely as you can. You should ask it so thoroughly and completely that when you're done, 
you can say to yourself, well, okay, I, I asked the question and I, I couldn't have asked it any better. And you know, right now that, I mean, I really asked the question. So once you feel really thorough about asking the question, you just let it go and wait. Mm -hmm. And I, it's, it's for me anyway, it's within a couple of days, I'm pretty clear what Holy Spirit wants me to do or think or say, and I'm pretty clear what Holy Spirit's answer is. And, uh, I, not, I, I generally have seen that uh, hold true. So ask the Holy Spirit, don't ask yourself. Oh, thank you, that makes a lot of sense. And I think having the patience to wait and not get caught up in that loop of reverting back to the anger or the pointing and the, so no. thank you. you, you, may, you may the anger, Judy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, oh, well, the anger is gonna come up. I mean, don't make the anger bad. The anger is just an indication that your your thinking's gone off in the wrong direction again. But it's 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 no reason to feel guilty. I mean, you don't have to guilt yourself over it. it that that's not useful. I mean, um, you just note it. It just means your thinking's gone off again, and you do what you need to do to self, you know, to correct that thinking. Essentially, Judy, I just think it's it's just it's really just a matter of getting above the battlefield, above the battle ground, rather. And that's a decision. It's a very simple decision. It may not seem like a simple decision, but it really is. The simple decision is, I'm not going there. I'm not participating in this insanity. I can have more control of my mind. And I can let this go. I don't have to get invested in this. So let all things be what they are. It comes down to that simplicity, really. Right. Okay. So, Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. It's been Thank a pleasure. You, Judy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. I see Lynn's got her hand up. Lynn? Hello, Reverend Tony. I remember you from Interfaith Fellowship. <laughs> okay. You mean when yeah. I spoke in New York? Yeah. 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 Wow, that was a while ago. And also, um, uh, the conference in New York City, that was wonderful. And John, it's always good to see you. I just wanted to pass on what my disembodied boyfriend, Ram Das. Uh, talks about I fell in love with him since this pandemic you know <laughs> but anyway I fell in love with someone who left their body I like that but anyway he said he had an issue with Casper Weinberger so what he did uh, he had um, an altar and he'd wake up he had a picture good morning Buddha good morning Maharishi good morning Casper so I guess if you you know, it's the intention that counts, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very simple. Sure. Well, nice to see you again. Thank you. For Good to see you too. Being here. Are you, are you in New York? Or do you live in New York? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Oh, right. <laughs> I I miss uh, I miss I haven't visited New York in a long time. I miss New York. I want I want to visit again, but I'm not going there until they lift some of their restrictions. <laughs> One day we could all help each other again. Yeah, oh. they're not going to well, let me eat in any restaurants there, so I'm not going to eat there. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> hey, what about anybody else? Got uh, whatever option, uh, Linda. Oh. I got her hand up, and so go ahead, Linda. Yes, hello. How are you? <laughs> Good to see you all. Hello. I have a question that I put in the chat, um, meaning the, how do you explain it? Can you elaborate on the meaning of it uh, not being nighttime at all, only being daylight? Is that mm -hmm. on an individual level only, or is that on the earth, uh, the earth, the earth as a whole, right? Is that how we explain it? Say, yeah. How I'm trying to the real world. Is yeah, is that in the real world? Is that in what people think is the real world on the actual earth, or only individual? Like when we come enlightened, it or, or enlightened or whatever you may call it. Well, I mean, this is this is a this is a great question, and <laughs> different you. people will <laughs> interpret it differently. And different course teachers will interpret it differently. Uh, I, the, the important thing is the real world is not heaven and it is not reality. It is the last illusion. It's the final dream. It's the happy dream. It's whatever else. You know, there's different terms for it. <clears throat> but it's it's this world healed. It's uh, 
And it, and it says it, it's going to be such a close reflection to heaven that heaven and the real world will cease to exist as separate states. So the, the mm -hmm. real world is going to, quote, look a lot like heaven, though heaven doesn't really mm -hmm. look like mm -hmm. anything. But so it's, <laughs> it's going to be as close to okay. a heavenly state as the world can uh, get. So still on Earth, okay, like in a thousand years, maybe or something, right? No, I, I'm I, this afternoon. I think this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. Wow. I, I'm, 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 as soon as I eat lunch, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> Before, you know, after the rainstorm, after the. I, know, I think it's important not to put it off in the future. It's important to you don't. We don't know. It could be this next instant. So I mean, it's important that you, you know, you don't, don't put salvation or happiness off into your into the future. Mm -hmm. um, so then, how literal do you interpret the passage? I mean, it's a passage in A Course in Miracles that night doesn't come to the real world, and okay. it does, doesn't it doesn't get dark. There is mm -hmm. no light that grows dim and goes and goes dark. So how literal do you take that? But um, and. Um, I take it literal. I mean, like, why not take it literal? I mean, you know, what the hell? So if I'm wrong, who cares? Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. It, I take it literal. And the fact that I can't conceive of how that is going to look, so what? Do I have to conceive of everything? You know, I mean, my mind is always, I got to put it in a box. I got to know what it's going to look like. I don't need to know what it's going to look like. I'm going to open mm -hmm. my mind up to that we're going to have a a reality here a physical reality that is there's not going to be night wow isn't that interesting <laughs> let's see how that happens it's really interesting yeah. yeah but i like to watch the night stars though when, when i'm in a clear <laughs> area where you can see the stars at night that's beautiful i like i like the stars too <laughs> I don't can know. we see the stars in the daylight? Maybe, sure, why not? Maybe we different type of stars. Maybe, Maybe you guys, we shouldn't be taking this quite so literally. You know? <laughs> Maybe we can turn it on and off by will. Maybe there's a little dimmer switch. Oh, a little <laughs> light switch. <laughs> One thing you're talking about what happens with your eyes. Maybe this isn't what happens with the eyes. You know? What happens with the mind? We're talking about the mind. Yeah. Mind, yes, you know? that's true. That's, yeah. that's it's all in the mind. Important part. Not so I probably. think, it's, you know, a lot of people take a lot of A Course in Miracles metaphorically, and that mm -hmm. is fine. Uh, I tend not to. I mm -hmm. think there are real metaphors. I've talked about this. I think there are real metaphors in A Course in Miracles. But to take, <clears throat> but, but metaphors are supposed to be obvious. Uh, like mm -hmm. ask not the sparrow how the eagle soars. Okay, that's mm -hmm. a metaphor. Um, mm -hmm. nobody expects me to go up and start talking to birds. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not like Dr. Doolittle? <laughs> I'm not really going to talk to a sparrow and an eagle. I don't even know where to go find one. Um, so that's a metaphor, but, uh, mm -hmm. certain things don't seem like metaphors to me. So when the course mm -hmm. says, you know, night doesn't come to it, there's nothing mm -hmm. in that phrase and that mm -hmm. passage that makes me that makes it obvious that it's a metaphor i mm -hmm. mean people, people think it's a metaphor because they can't grasp it mm -hmm. but I, I, that's not criteria for a metaphor oh, okay and what about the world as a dream is that a metaphor oh no 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 <laughs> no row 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 your boat <laughs> The world is a dream. No doubt about that. Memorly, memorly, memorly. That's not even a new <laughs> teaching. That's been around forever. <laughs> no. Right. When was that song wrote, written anyway? Row, 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 row down the stream. Long merrily, time ago, right? Merrily, merrily, life is but a dream. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was hundreds of years ago, too, right? It was in one of the Star yeah. Trek movies. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Captain Kirk sings it, was and it? The Doc looks at him and says, "That's something <laughs> logical. Life isn't a dream." <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it's in a Star Trek movie. Oh, cool. Everything I know, I learned from Star Trek. That was a book I love. Oh, nice. The old one. Uh, William Shatner just went to space recently. Good. Well, for let's, go to, let's go to Dean. Oh, Dean. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Linda. All right. Thank you. Go yes, ahead. thank you, John. Hi, hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna side with Helen here because if I picked up a book and uh, the slogan was "Listen, Learn, and Do," and that's how she introduced the course, 
No. I, I, I probably, I probably no. put it down, you know? Let me clear that up before you go on. Listen, Learn, and Do comes much later. The first line she heard was, you will see miracles through your hands through me. That's the first yeah. line Jesus channeled to her on that first day. Yeah, and I got that. And that's like, to me, between Jesus and Helen, you know, and, and, and that's fine. I have no argument with that. But I just want to say, when I pick up this book and the introduction says, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. You've got me. Yeah. You know? I'm glad. This, I'm glad. this stops me. And uh, yeah. so I think Helen knew what she was doing when she opened the book that way. That, that, that's all I'm saying. You know? <laughs> well, I, I would say, don't you think Jesus knew what he was doing when he was channeling to her? Right. You know, if that was going to be supposed to be the introduction, why didn't he give it to her? Why, why, why did that only come, you know, a decade well, late, uh, you know, eight, ten years later? Yeah. Well, uh, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not saying, the... I'm not saying I'm right and you're wrong. I'm just right. saying the possibility. Yeah. I mean, there's a possibility there. You know, maybe both. Maybe we're supposed to have both. Maybe, you know, you know, but I wouldn't throw out the one for the e either of them for the other. Right. No, I wouldn't. They're, they're all they're all there now. That's why I say read a different book and, and then, then go back to the book you like. You know, uh, open yourself up to what the other book might say. And right. say, nah, I don't really like that. I like this book better. I, I just I think we draw to us whatever we need. It to learn, you know, we're, we're creating it all. It's like we're kind of creating the, in a way, the curriculum for ourselves as we get ready. It, com it comes to us. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, it worked for me. I guess that's all I'm saying. The thing about nothing real can be threatened, <laughs> nothing unreal exists, is that it matches the editing. It is, as Helen progressed, she wanted things more abstract and less grounded. And that's how she edited the material. And when she finally put in that introduction, which was right before they sent it off to Hugh and Casey, that's a very abstract introduction. And that's where she was at that point. That, 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 her editing went from the practical to the abstract. So it's just part of, of her progression. And I think, she, I, I mean, she was uncomfortable for some reason with the, pra with the, with the practical stuff. And she wanted something abstract. And, you know, Jesus was working with her and, you know, it, it, it's fine. It's all fine. But put it out there. And it, it, as far as uh, like uh, where there's no night and things like that, I think one of the problems we run into as intellectual people is that we, we always try to understand what we don't know from what we know. And it's like... It's it, it's kind of a like trap, work. you know. It doesn't work, you know. It's no, no, like no. I think no. that's where faith comes in. We have to believe that you know there is something that we can't even compare to what we know now. You know, it's, no lies. Those are stepping stones, I think, to get us there. We have to kind of like I know the person who got him into meditation yoga was. Uh, a Christian minister, you know, I needed that bridge. We all need bridges, I think. And uh, so, you know, whatever works, you know, and if you're drawn to another uh, work, well, then that's what you need. You know, if you're, you're, if you're drawn to another form, uh, the truth is contained in many, uh, you know, many forms, right? They lead us to what we need to, to, to confront about ourselves and, and that's right. But I've enjoyed the discussion. I'm going to have to leave a bit, of, a little bit early, but thank you very much. Okay. I attended well, you, the, I think it must have been the 2000 uh, in San Francisco, the gathering. And was it when Gary Renard kind of was first coming on the scene? He was a speaker and yeah, uh, that it was great. 2000. That no, was maybe it's a little early. That was a couple of, that was about 2004 or something like that. Yeah. Or was it? Okay. 2007 in San Francisco. We came back to San Francisco. Gary Renard was there. Yeah, that's the one I attended. All right. Thank you very thank much. You. And thank, thank you, you, everybody, for. Yeah, being thank here. you for the, the discussion, Dean. Where do you live? Uh, 
Phoenix, Arizona area. It's hot there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's one. It's beautiful outside. I walked yeah. outside to warm up. Got a lot of chilly in the house. <laughs> Thank you. Christina, I start, I see that you've been making some observations along the way that have been uh, worth discussing. Maybe are you willing to come on and uh, share with us a little bit? Uh, sure. I wrote a question, but I can't find it anymore. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I have the question. Okay, Bud, would you read it, please? Sure. Hold on just a second. Let me get you. Who's there talking? Oh, there we go. Christina. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Christina. Hi. Hi. Nice to so, see you. Hi, Tony. Hi, everyone. Her, her question is, is there truly any separation at all between the things in the world and me? I mean, between form and me, my body and me, pizza and me. How do you feel? How do you see? How do you think about that? I think that the Course of Miracles community uh, got a little off the rails. <laughs> and... Uh, and um, they ran a little too far with the idea that the world's an illusion. And, and they, 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 they went in the direction that spirituality and religion has gone for millennia, which is, you know, like the ascetics, you know, body denying. I need to deny the body. I need to deny the experiences of the body. I need to deny the world. I need to turn away from the world. You know, it's, it's for some reason, it's just what spiritual people and religion does. But I understand what Christina is saying there. And I actually believe it was, I just explained it when I talked about the computer interface. Mm -hmm. I do think you have to relate to the world like it's you. You know, there's a Course in Miracles lesson. I bless the world because I bless myself. What that means is the world is you. <laughs> uh, I bless the world because I bless myself means the world's you. Yeah. And yeah. you have to relate to the world like it's you. It's your body in a sense. The whole world's your body. This is your body, yeah, but the whole world is our body. Right, right. It's our manifestation. It's our expression of self in manifestation. Mm -hmm. And and I think the Course is leading us to relate to the world that way, not to relate to the world like it's something I need to escape or just ignore or, you know, one of the analogies. I mean, some people relate to the Course like it's, Valium, you know, like spiritual value. You just, I take it to numb myself to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. the, 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 the spirituality is not, for me, it's not something I take to numb myself to the world. Mm -hmm. It's something I, I do so that I really know how to relate to the world and engage with it in a, in a way that's purposeful, in the way that the Holy Spirit wants me to. Mm -hmm. And I totally, I, I hear you and I want to say that I don't want to make spiritual people the bad guys in this, you know, in terms of doing that that way. I'll tell you, the whole world leans on science, Newtonian science, right? If it's not solid atoms follows Newtonian law, it's, it's woo-woo stuff, all right? But the interesting thing to me is that what you just described and that my question comes from, you know, the notion that we are pure love which is the flow of light you know quantum science has been around over a hundred years i mean john you and i've talked about this so much yeah, 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 we yeah. did that whole thing in manhattan a couple of years yeah, ago yeah. about course of miracles cause of love you know quantum science you know it's amazing it just blows my mind that we live today as if the quantum science doesn't exist like over a hundred years ago they showed, you know, the light and particle, and it's all the same thing. The observer, the relationship is what creates form, right? And we pick that and use it in our cell phones and for GPS tracking and whatever, but we act like we aren't quantum beings, you know? So Tony, your answer is how I'm beginning to feel. And that is that love and that bringing in the Holy Spirit, I, have, I use the word soul for that, you know, allowing the soul to lead, allows me to flow as love through the world. And you're absolutely right, Tony, it's like both ways. How can it be just my mind to the world? The world is informing me, you know? So yeah, John, I'd love to hear from you too on, on that question I asked, how do you see, feel and think about that, you know? Because right. it's new for me. Well, it, from a little bit more of a metaphysical, mystical point of view, uh, 
Um, I can see I'm this is a little different from uh, uh, Tony, but um, I can see this not a real world. I mean, I, I can accept the world. I mean, I live in the world. I got to be part of the world because mm -hmm. this, is, this is the school room. This is where we're learning our lessons with these bodies in this world, in this time, all of which are not real. <laughs> the body is temporal. Time is uh, a poke as opposed to eternity. Eternity is another dimension altogether. It's not a long, long time. It's just a totally another dimension. It, there's actually a line in the course where it says, you know, we don't, the two don't intermix because, I mean, the two levels don't mix, right? The ego doesn't understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't even talk to the ego because it, it doesn't see one. I mean, there, there is no ego on the Holy Spirit's point of view, right? There's, none, there's nothing there. There's nothing to be, if, there's no ego in heaven, be another way to say that. Right? So we're really looking here at a kind of, I, I think, Christian, you could a quantum leap, so to speak, into another way of, of the mind and seeing mm -hmm. which our poor little human, that's why I'm talking about the eyes, so I'll go, I see light, but there's another dimension of light perhaps, so there's nothing to do with our eyes that we're talking about. And it's, it's sometimes it's, you want to see, close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, and, and yet light is both particle and form and and wave exactly, so it's exactly, both light exactly. and what creates the form of my hand you know of the pizza you yeah. know it is it is yeah so it, there's, there's a lot there we're moving yeah. but, but the form of your hand is also temporal and maybe 40, 50 years from now that may not exist at all <laughs> maybe i mean there's maybe. this whole thing about go back to the bible you know and and I am, you know, I am here now. I am here. I am light. I am the truth. You know, Jesus said all those things. And he said, you will do I am these things mean. and more. You will do these things and more. And that's the first line that, you know, Tony read from the, uh, you know, Helen's first words. It's Does just I fascinating. Am a body? What? Does I am mean a body? It's all of it. Nothing is left out. See, for me, love okay. embraces everything. I don't leave anything out of it. And okay. that's, as I said, I've got baby steps, you know, tiptoeing into that way. There is nothing outside of love because there is no outside to love. Okay. Of course, it's clear about that. There's nothing outside of you that's a direct outside oh. of you. Right. Therefore, pizza in my body is all part of it. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. As far as that dimension is concerned, yes, it's true. <laughs> Who else it's like this is Christina, nice to, nice to see you. You too. How's your husband? Doing just great. Just okay. still churning out discover feet, you know, search tools for all these new books that are coming out right now. He's, he's done The Course in Miracles, The Course in Miracles Original Edition, The Course of Love, yeah. Journey into the Unknown, and now he's working on Choose Only Love. He's doing great. He works, on the he works on the outer net and I work on the inner net. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give him a message for me. What's that? Okay. okay. We still need to correct that problem with the search engine uh -huh. on the original edition because it won't find the chapter titles. It won't find the lesson. Oh, yeah. Title. So if you type in a lesson, it doesn't find it if it's only in the title. I don't think that's a problem, Tony. I think that's a feature. <laughs> no, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave that to Regia and Colin. No, I'll put that pass it along. I, I have given it to Regia, so I've, I've given it to, to you. <laughs> I'm not taking it. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, let's uh, go back. To, let's go back to. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Any other um, questions or observations that? One that someone else would like to make. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It'd be nice to hear from some of the other long termers in terms of your perspective on this. That well, there's lots. Nice there's lots of observations in chat. Oh, lots okay. of really great observations. You want to share some of those? Uh, well, I, I I can. I mean, Please I think your hand up. Yeah, let's get the people with their hands up. Oh, okay. No, Alan Dom. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Hey, guys. Um, my question, my, my question is, I'm noticing in, in, in all these wonderful little boxes that there are some, some here together in partnership. 
right? And so my wife and I are studying the course for the first time together. We're about how long? About maybe maybe nine months in. And my question to both of you gentlemen is, what experience might you have had or what recommendations might you have for a couple that's taking this journey together? Mm. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Seriously, I mean, congratulations. Great for you. Um, you're not both going to relate to the course the same way. Uh, a lot of forgiveness, you know, things. Uh, it's cha it's a challenging teaching, especially around relate. You know, the text. If you're reading the text, the teaching on relationships is very challenging. And uh, just know that, you know, like uh, put on your seat belts. It's bound to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. But other than that, hey, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just very challenging things, right? Because, you know, the course challenges you not to look at other people as special. So you got to not look at each other as special. And, and then it actually says in one point, if, if you choose certain people and you decide that you're going to do something with certain people that you're not going to do with everybody, that's because you're trying to make a bargain with your guilt and you're, because you think your guilt is going to kill you. So the bargain you make is specialness. And then in another place, it tells you that your special relationship is actually the gift of death. You know, that's really sweet. Mm. So <laughs> you're, you're, you're giving each other death by thinking of each other as special. So when I say it's challenging, it's challenging because, you know, you don't want to think of your partner as killing you and how you look at them as really is, is, is you embracing death. But that's what it says. So well, of most, it, it's, <laughs> that's really interesting perspective. And I think a lot of people, and I don't know this for sure, um, but when you think about special relationships, you think about partnerships, uh, those that are studying the course without their significant other are running into the, probably the same challenge, right? Oh, I yeah. think what we, what, you know, what we're learning at least is we, we don't know what the right way is, but one of the things we both agree on is we, we have an appreciation for what holy might look like or when holy does show up um and, and 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 identifying specialness in the relationship sometimes but again that's that's my point earlier is it's new to us so so your guidance is valuable and appreciated just uh, you know listen to the holy spirit when, when things get challenging turn it over to the holy spirit mm -hmm. the holy spirit loves you cares for you will guide you gently don't let your intellectual understanding of things be your guide. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide and things will be okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, you, but you're gonna have to challenge every value that you have about each other and relationships and what they mean and all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think very simply. With you. It's cool. Very simply, I think we just say, you know, just keep loving each other. That's number one. You know, that, that's a number one. Just, just keep remembering whatever is going on, whatever is happening, that's my first job. And not to get caught up with my own stuff. I love this person. I want to keep loving this person. Mm. That's what I'm here for. And it doesn't matter what the other stuff is just going on in the universe. You know, mm. I'm here to love you. And you're here to love me. And if you don't love me, well, that's okay. I'm still loving you. Mm. <laughs> Where, where are you two? Where do you live? We are in a town called Tom's River, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. I like to know where people are. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. I see Lynn's back again. I have a, I have a question that's been on my mind for a long time. Um, the Course in Miracles, the core of it is non-dualism. But there are many depths, depth, depths to the course. And I personally, I think it's okay whatever place you are in the course. I, um, like the bhakti yogi doesn't want to give up the beloved. Mm. Um, we still need the Holy Spirit. But that's called, uh, not, that's called dualistic. 
But to me, the course is totally, uh, you know, we're all one. Right. But it's just that we, and I think there are a lot of people in the community getting caught up on words, especially when I read my poetry or, or say, I will step back and lead the way. Who is going to lead the way? You know, you are going to, you know, help me, you know? Okay, let me say something that will probably be very unpopular. <laughs> I don't please, think, please. I don't think this is non-dualism at all. Okay, and I think it's actually a disservice to call it that. It's a disservice to the course, and it's a disservice to non-dualism. Um, the course never uses the term, and... While, of course, it has, you know, all spirituality has things in common. And there's great non-dual statements in the Course. I understand that. But the work of the Course, the work of the Course, is our relationship to the Holy Spirit, our relationship to our brother and sister. It's in the world of, of so-called duality. Uh, we listen to the ego or the Holy Spirit. We have to choose between the ego and the Holy Spirit. All of these things do not sit well with traditional non-dual teaching and to try to make the course into a non-dual teaching is problematic and and as i said it's a disservice to the course it's a disservice to non-dualism if you're really a non-dualist there are better paths that you should be embracing that are true non-dual paths and and i don't think you know you're just going to be conflicted you're going to be conflicted with a course when it starts, and then you're going to try to I interpret it away. But the, the course is about choosing between the Holy Spirit and the ego, and that choice is in the world of duality. So, but, but, may I, but, 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 yeah, but, <laughs> John, so go for it. <laughs> well, there's this, you know, Doug just put something up on the screen about the one mindedness, which is the one mind foundation that we work with here in New York. Uh, you know, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Okay, so that's one, but it looks like two, but the Son is one, and he's also saying that you're one with me. We are of the same mind. The Son a different mind. The dualism exists only up to the point at which we get to non-dualism, and then, you know, in terms of the Course, you're God. I mean, you're part of God, certainly. That's the way we're being asked to see it. And when you, like, even when you fall in love with someone, you say, I'm one with the, the beloved. I mean, that's what a, a leap, but that's what that's what's in the mind. That's what's in the soul. That's what the experience is. So I see it as leading us in this direction. Okay, and let me add this: it's also a very important teaching in the Course of Miracles that while we're one with God, we are not our own creator, and we did that's not true. create ourselves. So the Son right. is somehow distinct from the father and embracing the course as a path it, it means understanding that and not not usurping uh the role of the father right and, and so again that kind of flies in the face of traditional non-dual or a real non-dualism which would which would blur, or I don't blur is not a good word, which would have no. you embrace being the divinity. So while a course certainly has you embrace being divine, you're not, you do, we did not create our no, The course is very clear about that. You're yeah, right. the course is, that's a, that's a very right. foundational idea in the course. We did not create ourselves. So there is the creator and the created. We are the created, we are not the creator. That you can't get around that in the Course of Miracles. And still, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. And he says, There's no difference between you and me, Jesus and us, except in time. And here we are, kind of caught trapped in time. Well, it also says, I and the Father are one. He says, There are two parts of this statement that indicate, I forgot, I have to look it up, that, 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 that we're not our creator. That being one with the Father doesn't, you know, he just wants it to be clear that that doesn't mean we created ourselves. I understand that. No, yeah. that that's very clear in the course. Yeah, that's very clear. Exactly. But that's, it's, it's as though we're headed home, if you will, and, you know, heaven, uh, in other terminology, it's not here. <laughs> it's not a part of this at all. It's another dimension, if you will, that we're kind of leaping into. Thank you. I just want to say, God will take the last step. 
No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I read that line somewhere. <laughs> it's an important teaching in A Course in Miracles, too. And a lot of people are trying to take the last step or think that they, they have some, that that's something that they have to do. But it is nothing that we have to do. We have to, we have to turn this world into the real world. That's our job. But once, once the real world is a, com a complete thing, God takes the final step. So I, I'm trying to figure out how to just have daytime all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get stuck on that, will you? Uh, <laughs> that dualistic point of view there. Uh. <laughs> it's very mind opening. <laughs> we'll have to have holy SPF levels of protection. Right. All right. Anybody else have something they'd like to chat about? I always like to see if some of the other teachers. Doug, would you like to share? So, so I could say something. Okay, why don't you? Glenn, hey. Who is that? Glenn Holman. Hi, hi there. I was, I've been on my phone most of the time because I had things going on here, but uh, I figured, oh, what an interesting conversation. So I'm able now to join on my on my computer. So, uh, gosh, uh, what a... Uh, Tony, it's so nice to see you and hear you. Thank um, you, John, John too, and others, Christina. I mean, it's so wonderful. Um, and I appreciate your um, your open mindedness. I mean that that the last the last of the characteristics of the teachers of God. Um, it's huge. So uh, one of the things that I hear a lot in this conversation and generally is reference to the Holy Spirit. And of course, um, Holy Spirit is mentioned many, many times in A Course in Miracles, which I've been with since 1978. Um, and then A Course of Love says something very radical. Um, it says that the time, or that is the era, of the Holy Spirit is over. And so I think that um, raises a lot of questions and uh, it's a bit of a conundrum, I think, to uh, some folks. Um, and, uh, but I also think that A Course in Miracles, if I remember right, refers to the Holy Spirit as an aspect of yourself. Mm -hmm. So to me, the, 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 the key element here, when I'm thinking about the Holy Spirit, is not to think of it as anything other than myself. And, and I am part of the oneness. So it's not a matter of, so I, ha, I need to erase from my mental construct the, that with the conditioning that I've had for you know, my life of, okay, there's me and then there's other than me. And to think of the Holy Spirit as other than me, I think is an error. At least that's how I'm seeing it now. And, I th and, and I'm feeling quite confident that that's what A Course of Love is referring to as the time of the Holy Spirit is over because uh, we are now in the, in the time in which we can establish a direct relationship with the divine. And <clears throat> if we want to call it the Holy Spirit, that's fine. Um, but as long as we do so without feeling that it is other than. Hmm. Very good, Glenn. Yeah, I'm aware of the te you know of that teaching in a in a course of love. I mean, it it gets into that in the later part of it, um, and it, it also talks about the time of learning being over. And actually, that has been really good for me um, because learning always comes from this idea that I lack something. I lack something, and so I got to go find it. I lack knowledge. I lack information. I got to go find it, uh, and it's very, you know, it's it's actually impossible to to find anything from a sense of I don't have enough, you know, that I'm lacking. Uh, so there comes a time when you have to let go of that idea of lacking, and I think that relates to letting go of the idea of the Holy Spirit being outside of you, like what you're talking about. I don't quite know how to relate to all of that teaching in a course of love. Uh, except to kind of be open to it personally, just like open to it and and see how it it's sitting with me. Um, I do know that in most channeled works that I have read, there come or it comes a point 
after the person's been channeling for a long time, that they become, you know, it becomes blurry. Uh, what entity is speaking through them? I mean, it happened with Tom Carpenter. You know, he was channeling Jesus for years. And then towards the end, it was more like he didn't need the intermediary. He could just like, speak and it was the same as if Jesus was speaking. So it's a little of this, that, what you're talking about. You don't need the intermediary of the Holy Spirit after a while because you become the personification of the Holy Spirit and it's your voice. And so mm -hmm. I think a Course of Love wants us to break up the separation between ourselves and the Holy Spirit by introducing this idea that the time of the Holy Spirit is over. Um, but I, but I'm not sure. I'm not. A, I'm not really a scholar in a course of love. But I find the teaching intriguing. And every year when I, you know, I've, I've been through that book now like three or four times. So every time we get to that, I'm just like I just reading it and I'm open to it. And I, but I, I do. It has been useful to think of the time of learning as over, which I think is related. That they're, they're very related. So to the and and that is what I said. It's like uh, the time for me coming from this idea that I lack something that I need to go get. That's not useful anymore. Okay. Right on. So thank you. And thank you for all that you do and all that you did to get that book, Course of Love, into the world. It's such a beautiful, I mean, it's such a beautiful book. That, I mean, it's quality printed, the rounded corners. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's a classy, classy <laughs> book. I love holding it in my hands, even though I read it mostly from a Kindle. I, it's still, it's, it's a great physical book. No. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. I, we we did make an effort to to make it really uh, attractive. Uh, also, make it attractive uh, to Course in Miracles people. However, I have to admit <laughs> that the second edition uh, of um, a, a, a Course of Love, which includes the dialogue is unveiled. Um, we had a choice. We could either do the classy. With the rounded corners and all that, um, or the unclassy, uh, and um, and keep it from significantly raising the price, uh -huh. and so that's and so that's what we did. <laughs> okay, I guess I haven't. I I'm not wasn't aware that. Yeah. I, I'm still looking at the ones with the rounded corners. Well, you can you can check out you can check out the uh, dialogues unveiled on the website. Okay. Or, you know, if you want to support us, you can buy the buy the new one. <laughs> I'm sure when we run out of selling the ones we got, we will buy whatever one you're selling. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we do. And I, yeah, well, I would say to buy it and sell it. We're getting near the end here and we I are. have to get off, right? You know. Even. Right, I know you need to go. And I so, just wanted so. to say, Glenn, it's not so much supporting you guys, but giving myself a gift. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Tony, we will let you go to your uh, own service there in San Francisco now. And so thank you very, very, very much for being with us. You got any parting words or no? And um, then we'll go to uh, Bobby. Is Bobby with us? I like Bobby. Bobby's with us. I like her to read the, the Lord's Prayer from the Course in Miracles. Uh, Tony, any parting words? Have fun in church. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you for these two hours. It's uh, been a pleasure. Oh, it was a pleasure to, I mean, Here actually, I am, John. it's a pleasure just to see you up and well. We were praying yeah. for you during your, your healing challenge. And yeah. we at the Community <laughs> Miracle Center are so happy that you're up and well. And, you know, so. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. And it's great to see you uh, healthy and happy. Yeah, we're, we're healthy now. We're pretty far down, but we came back up. That's the main thing. That's the thing. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, okay, good, um, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I, I got to go to my Sunday service, which I never... Bye. I, I Bye, never, Bye, Reverend Tony. See you after you. Uh, here, I'm going to go back to a, a gallery view here for a minute so I can see all the little squares. Right. Oh, there you they are. <laughs> Well, all the little squares, huh? All the little squares. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. A little rectangle. Bye. 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 Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh. Again. So let me remind you all that the next time, uh, the next Sunday of Monday will be December the 12th uh, with Robert Perry, who we were talking about in the beginning, and to get a little bit deeper 
and to understanding of what he's up to and uh, his addition of the Course in Miracles, etc. And um, we continue to have classes here in New York. If you want to be interested in that, visit our website and find out more about it. And in the meantime, uh, Bobby, you want to share? Uh, Bud, can you get the Lord's Prayer on the screen? <laughs> you bet. Okay, good. And then we'll come back and we'll say goodbye. Okay. <sighs> Forgive us our illusions, Father, and help us to accept our true relationship with you in which there are no illusions and where none can ever enter our holy this is yours. What can there be in us that needs forgiveness when yours is perfect? The sleep of forgetfulness is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love. Let us not wander into temptation, for temptation of the Son of God is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given and accept but this into the minds which you created and which you love. Amen. 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 Let's go back to the hour review and uh, we'll say goodbye to each other. Thank you.